Hello and welcome back. So let's look at a different way on how we should interpret a 12 lead EKG. So the first thing is if you went to school in, in pretty much anywhere they taught you a six step process or maybe there was uh, more steps to it or less and they, they told you to gather all this data and then you make a decision on it and usually focused heavily on axis beats per minute, uh, some amount of morphology, look at V1, see if there's a bundle branch block and things like that. Let's look at it a little bit differently. Let's look at it a new way. So let's look at the morphology and ask specific questions. Okay. So is there a crazy thing going on here? Is this a big, wide, paced, complex looking rhythm? Is this uh, all kinds of other stuff going on, right? Um, anything that's just completely abnormal, not a really rough analysis. Think of this like getting a general impression for an EKG. And then look at the rate, look at the... Uh, amount of beats per minute that your EKG is reading compared to your manual pulse. Then look at the QRS and say, okay, what's the width of the QRS, the actual computer calipered way, right? You, or you can break out your EKG calibers, whatever makes you happy. And then check the axis. And the axis we want to look at is the ventricular axis. Many 12 leads have three axes on them. We want to look at the ventricular one, which in most 12 leads is going to be right in the middle. Then we want to analyze for specific waveforms. Do we see ST segment elevation? Do we see inverted T waves where they shouldn't be there? Do we see signs of early depolarization like with WPW? Do we see signs of early repolarization or a lack of repolarization? All of these things become very important at that point. What you're specifically looking for is abnormalities. So be very well acquainted with what normal is and then ask yourself if there are abnormalities there. Let's have a look at this EKG. So. This is a wide complex rhythm. Um, we can see some pacer spikes and stuff in it. So we, we know pretty quickly right off the bat this is a paced rhythm. But let's analyze it this way. Uh, do we see first any specific crazy morphology? Yes. Okay. Just a general impression of the morphology shows us this is a heart that is malfunctioning in some way. Now, whether it's acute or whether it's planned out, we, we don't really know yet. We're just looking for an abnormality. Then let's look at the rate. 72 beats per minute. Did we palpate 72 beats per minute? And we'll assume in this patient we did. Then we want to look at the QRS width as dictated up here. It's 0.20, okay? So it's 0.20, meaning it's wider than 0.12. So this is what we would define as a wide complex rhythm. So we know that it's wide. It's wide in V1. It's wide everywhere, right? Then we move down to the QRS complex, uh, or excuse me, the QRS axis. Okay, um, what is this axis? It's negative 70. Okay, so that shows us that maybe everything isn't coming from a perfect place in the heart. Maybe we are not getting that, that nice, you know, negative 30 to, to 30 or whatever your particular protocol defines as acceptable. Right? There's normal and then there's acceptable. Okay, just so we all understand that. For example, a pregnant female has an axis that's technically outside of the range of normal, but is completely acceptable provided she's in the third trimester because the heart turns, right? So as we move forward from there, we look at more specifically morphology. Do we look at signs of depolarization? Do we look at uh, signs that are abnormal for repolarization? The very first thing that should jump out to you is a pacer spike. There's a notch in lead one. So let's look for that pacer spike everywhere else. And when we get to the precordial leads, which take a much better look at the ventricles of the heart, there we can see giant pacer spikes. Okay, good to go. So let's explain what this arrow is up here that we've been looking at. That arrow is something you should ignore until you have made your diagnosis. So we have just made the diagnosis of a pace rhythm in a very organized fashion. Had we read that block of information, we would have gotten some sort of bias, whether we wanted to prove the computer right or if we wanted to disprove it, we'd have had a bias. And we want to avoid confirmation bias in EKG interpretation the same way we want to avoid it in scientific literature, right, or in research. So moving forward, we have a paced rhythm. Now we want to see is our, is our patient matching up to that, right? Hey, do you have a pacemaker? Let's look and see if we see a pacemaker. Always confirm your EKG interpretation with your patient presentation. Never look at an EKG and call STEMI on toe pain that you just happen to run a 12 lead on because they're a diabetic and protocol says you have to. If the patient has no chest pain, if they have no cardiac failure and they're awake and alert and they don't have any mental issues, chances are it's not a STEMI, no matter what the computer says. You also have to take into account that the computer does not catch all STEMIs, particularly in the case of the Q-Wave MI. It does not catch them very well. And if a STEMI is allowed to progress for long enough, the ST elevation begins to kind of drop down and Q waves develop 
And then you're, you're in for a real treat because what you've got is a, a patient who's having that same transmural MI who really, really needs a cath lab who is now not going to get one until it's much, much too late. So don't trust your computer. Look at your rate, look at the numbers, confirm the numbers, right? If the QRS is dictated to be 0 0.20, but we see a nice narrow QRS, we know to dis disregard that, right? We want to look at our, our QT intervals and stuff, particularly in the patients where we suspect QT prolongation, so a history of long QT syndrome or someone found with an empty bottle of amitriptyline right beside them. And then from there, we want to go forward and look at our individual waves and see what's there and what's not and what alerts us to something being out of the ordinary. I'm kind of hesitant to use the word normal when it comes to morphology, but what is out of the ordinary? What is remarkable? Look at your 12 leads this way and just see how much more you catch. I mean, analyze them both ways when you're working with real patients, obviously. Make sure you catch everything you can. You don't want to misinterpret an EKG, but do a little practice on the internet if you want to. As you can see in this particular EKG, had you not done it this new way, you might have missed the fact that there was a pacemaker in this patient. If you look at the computer's interpretation, it's not always going to be right. So give this a whirl, see how it works out for you, and get out there and practice.